Lay down. Lay down. Lay down. Today we're looking at this rather upsetting video of a 10 year old kid getting held at gunpoint by the police. This video was recorded on April 16th, 2021 and takes place in Michigan, USA. Now this situation may seem insane, but there's a really interesting backstory as to how this situation unfolded. And I'll go into the details later on in the video. So let's take a look. Hands, hands, put the phone down now, sit. Lay down, lay down, lay down, put the phone down. Stand up, okay? Stand up, you're good. Stand up, I got you. Hey, you're good, you're good, all right? Stand up, I got you. You're gonna be okay, stand up. I got you. I'm gonna detain you for right now, okay? Let me get every form and set it on the ground so we don't break it, all right? I didn't run from you! Are you okay? It's fine. These come off just as easy, all right? Are you okay? Yes, I'm okay. Okay. Can you put him in my pocket? Two detained, Is there anything in Fox we need to know about? No, no, nothing. All right. You're okay, all right? Who's in the car with you? It's your dad? Okay. Do you, do you know why he took off running? Huh? You know why he took off running? No. You got it, I can't breathe. All right, he's gonna be okay too. Don't worry about it. All right. You're okay. Everything's gonna be fine. I feel bad for this kid. This must have been a terrifying situation, especially considering what happened before the cops arrived. He's trembling whilst he's breathing, which is making this strange sound almost if he's shivering. This is the defense mechanism in action. When our brain experiences a high level of stress, the brain goes into the fight flight freeze response, as well as releases a bunch of chemicals into the bloodstream. One of these chemicals is adrenaline, which causes the heart rate to increase as well as the muscles to become tense. This is because tense muscles are stronger and more resistant to damage, allowing him to better respond to the threat. It also causes us to breathe rapidly to take in as much oxygen as possible in order to provide the energy to the muscles and the body to allow it to better respond to the stressor. He's trying to breathe rapidly, but his muscles are rapidly tensing up and shaking, which makes this strange noise here. Stop pulling away from me. Stop moving. Stop. Wow. Stop. Where's the sergeant? Stop. Get off of me, dude. Stop. I'm going to pull your mask up, okay? You're okay? You're not hurt at all? No. Are you ambulance training? Air. Everything's gonna be good. Don't worry about it, all right? For you, it's out on James L. We're gonna take the patch off and enter up on the Metro East. The detail will be on Can I call him, huh? Yep, we'll let you make some phone calls in just a little bit, okay? He's okay. He's okay. He's all right. Do me a favor. Let's go over this side of the car, okay? You're good. You're good. You're good. It's all right. Where's your mom at? He's at home. Why you got my okay. son in handcuffs? All right. Why y'all got my son in handcuffs, bro? Here, let's go over to my car. We'll get you out of those handcuffs, all right? Hey, why are you supposed to take him out of handcuffs? Okay. I was actually just taking him over to the car to do it. All right, you're good. Do you want to call your mom? Yeah. All right, we can call your mom. You want to have a seat right there on the yeah, curb? Go ahead and sit on the curb, all right? The cop standing by the kid has one hand on his hip. This is likely something called fame confidence. In 2010, psychologist Amy Cuddy explored the strong link between body language and confidence levels. She found that people who held the power pose, such as putting your hands on your hips or spreading your body wide apart, actually had a significantly increased level of testosterone, which is the hormone associated with confidence and assertion. The study also found that holding a power pose dramatically reduced the amount of cortisol in the bloodstream, which is a stress hormone. This is likely due to the fact that when we are being attacked, appearing larger and more threatening can actually ward off predators. So we evolved to do power poses when feeling threatened. The brain also evolved to release these chemicals to increase confidence and aggression while doing this response, which helps us survive. The cop does this here likely because he just went through a very stressful situation and is trying to reduce the stress he's feeling by altering his body language. This is also a subconscious response. Response, meaning that the conscious mind doesn't know it's doing it really. 
Another cop does this exact behavior later on before touching his face and pacifying. The release of adrenaline and increase in heart rate causes the muscles to tense up, which compresses the nerve endings in the muscles. This leads to a tingling sensation that must be itched to pacify, which is why you see him do this here. You're, you're good, you can stand, you can sit, it's up to you. I get it. What is it, Huron Street? Huron the Street? The Kroger on Huron Street 94. Kroger on Huron Street 94. What do you mean, what's going on? My dad got pulled over. Oh my motherfucking God. Wait, I'm on my way. I'm on my way, I'm coming from here. She killed him, I'm on my way. Okay, just tell, just tell her everything's okay. He's all right. Okay. So just hurry, but don't hurry, okay? We don't want you to get into an accident. He, okay, he's he's okay. So we're, where? You're on Street 94, we're at the Kroger. Um, at the Kroger by, uh, okay. McDonald's. There's a um, powerhouse the gym Kroger. there, a shell station, we're right behind the shell station. Okay, I'm on my way, I'm on my way. Okay, and your son's fine. Okay. Y'all good? You need a water or anything? You thirsty? Yeah. Gatorade? The cop keeps pacifying, and I'm unsure if this is due to the incredibly stressful situation that just happened, or he knows that arresting a 10 year old kid might not look the best for him. Either way, he's feeling stressed here. The kid has his hand in his pockets, which is a submissive behavior. By putting his hands in his pockets, he's showing to the cops that he doesn't intend on using them. Our hands are our greatest weapons, and if they are trapped in our pockets or held behind our backs, it signifies to others that you are not a threat to them. It's a sign of submissive anxiety. He then scratches his head, which is a pacifying behavior. It's entirely understandable as he has just been in an incredibly stressful situation and is filled with a soup of chemicals. I'm gonna grab him a drink. Okay. You want a Gatorade or a water? Gatorade. All right. Thank you. Yep. Uh, can you get into, um, it's a bag in the car and it's green and Yep. It's my grandma's gift. I never, okay. I never yeah, we'll make sure we get everything for you. They're going to have to do some things with the uh, car just because, you know, what happened. Okay. Um, but yeah, we'll, de we'll definitely make sure we get that for you. Don't worry about that. It's uh, Huron near Whitaker. Oh, oh, hey, hey! Hello. Huron. Okay, um, don't start crying. Your mommy on the way. Yeah. Okay. Um, right. Where are you at? Okay. Um, okay. Call me I know I asked you, but you're okay. You don't need the paramedics to look at you at all. Didn't hit your head. No. See, bolt was on all that good stuff. Yeah. Okay. And like I said, sorry about that initial stuff. All right. You wanna, you wanna go see your dad? Don't forget your, uh, don't forget your Gatorade. Mom's on her way. Still, still I'm still on it. I'm still on it. I'm still on it. I'm going to be done here in a second.
It's a common theme I'm seeing in these videos of cops always asking other cops if they are recording with their body cameras when they know that they've done something wrong. I don't want to be unfair to them, but it seems like they're asking just to figure out if the others have deliberately turned them off to avoid incriminating themselves. Now, this response may seem really uncalled for, and to an extent it is. However, there is a backstory to this situation. What the video doesn't show is that right before this took place, police officers were called to a Briarwood Mall in response to a shooting. As an officer was checking vehicles leaving the mall to try and find the suspect, this car was seen speeding into oncoming traffic to flee the cops. A police chase ensued and the driver, with his 10-year-old son in the front seat, drove over 100 miles an hour, weaving in and out of traffic on the freeway. He was then cornered when he drove into the town shopping plaza, which is when we see the video begin. The driver, who is the boy's father, was arrested and charged with second degree fleeing and eluding, possession of stolen property, resisting and obstructing, child abuse and driving on a revoked license. So this really does give some much needed context to the video. Although this guy wasn't the shooter, he did try and flee the cops and deliberately risk the life of his son by driving over 100 miles an hour, weaving in and out of traffic. He's very lucky that no one was killed. I don't think the kid needed to be handcuffed, however when police are called to a shooting they are naturally incredibly tense and on edge, and to be fair when they realised that he was no danger to them, they released him. The family of the 10 year old sued the police department for $400,000 for causing emotional injury to the child, which I think is a bit rich considering the father was the one who deliberately put his son's life at risk, driving straight into oncoming traffic to avoid being caught. What do you think? Should they have acted differently? Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching this video guys, if you did enjoy it, please be sure to hit the like button and subscribe for more content and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.